Well, I just want to start out Happy New Year to everybody. I know I can't see you guys in person, um, but just excited to start a, a new 2023 season and building this team uh, into the best version of itself. You know, obviously big personal news today, um, Candace and I and our family, we're just beyond blessed and honored to represent Washington State football and, and Washington State University in our program. And special thanks go out to President Schultz, uh, Chancellor Chilton, our whole uh, administration team, especially our athletic director, Pat Chun, um, and just the belief in the direction of our program and where we're headed. Uh, just really excited to build on the foundation that we've built uh, over the course of the last season. And, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say there's a special thanks to a lot of players out there uh, in my past and obviously presently that uh, have contributed to this. So um, Pullman's home for us. Washington State is home for, for me and our family. And, and Candace and I couldn't be more excited to, to extend our time here and be here and extremely dedicated to building something special here at Washington State. So uh, with that, just excited to talk about our new staff. Uh, I think we got a lot of great pieces to the puzzle that fit for us, that fit Washington State, that fit our region, and more importantly, fit our players and are in partnership with us to create their success. So I'll open it up to any questions. Jamie from Cookpin, go ahead. Coach, good afternoon. How's it going? Good. I, I, I have you, Jamie. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, just real quick, can you kind of go through um, each of your new coordinators and position coach, those being Coach Arbuckle, Schmetting, uh, Mile, and uh, and Edwards? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things, Jamie, you know, it has been really important to me to create stability. You know, obviously you look from last year to this year, uh, we didn't quite do that. And that was the focal point of every hire going forward. Okay. And the biggest thing I spent my Christmas time really focused on is who's going to lead the direction of our offense, okay? And the biggest focal point there um, was how do we take a step forward? How do we not restart? How do we build on the pieces and the players that we have currently in place? And that's where Ben Arbuckle rose up above the rest. And in many conversations with Ben and his philosophy and watching extensively Western, Western Kentucky film and hearing the language of it and how he's going to develop Cam and where our offense can take a step forward with the pieces that we have in place. Um, I know Ben's young, but he is young. He's smart. He's aggressive. And I'm just even more convicted listening to him talk and install, you know, our offense with our coaches on his vision and his passion for this game and his vision and his passion for Washington State. You know, so as we kept going through that process, uh, major hire within our football program and excited to have Ben and his family here. Uh, with that, joining him is Nick Edwards uh, as our wide receivers coach. Uh, Nick has extensive you know, ties to the region, uh, being from Tacoma, playing at Eastern Washington, coaching there. And then obviously Pac-12 and NFL coaching experience really went into this decision. And you know, obviously Coach Arbuckle and myself were really involved in that hire and excited about what he's going to bring in just bringing a bigger, broader picture uh, to the passing game and how his experiences fit in with Coach Arbuckle's vision and love his consistency in his teaching and how detailed he is and what he does with our players. So um, combining that with obviously uh, Clay McGuire being our offensive line coach, uh, Nick Whitworth being tight ends and special teams, and Coach Atawaya, you know, obviously maintaining that role as running backs coach, as well as being our associate head coach going forward. Uh, then on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, Jeff Schmetting, you know, through a long process, you know, really is the right fit. You know, I think it's a unique situation. We've brought in a system of defense that we feel extremely confident about. And we feel Jeff can come in and kind of refresh that. I've been having many conversations with him about the 80-20. Let's keep 80% of what we do. Uh, let's look at 20% of where we can improve, grow, and get better. And I think Jeff's breadth of knowledge in various schemes, you know, odd front, even front pressures, you know, I think can bring something, you know, to our defense and in our program. And obviously it's no secret, Jeff spent, you know, 15 years, I believe, coaching in Eastern Washington. He's a Spokane, Washington native. His family calls this home. Okay. And those, those are just like I started off were really important factors. And I like his mentality and I like how he's going to put a stamp on his defense. Okay. Not my defense, our defense. Okay. Um, and then partnering uh, with him was uh, Frank Miele, who, you know, everyone probably thought it was probably odd to hire an edges coach before a coordinator. Frank is one of those guys that has such respect in the coaching profession and in our region that it was a no brainer to bring him into our program. And early on, I, I knew that he was interested, uh, mutual contacts, and it was just, 
his development, his passion, his detail. And I think his culture building on that side of the ball um, just trumped everything. And I knew right away that we were going to bring Frank into our program. So excited to add him, you know, to Coach Malone, still coaching our safeties, Nichols, Coach Brown with our corners, and obviously Pete Calgas still being our assistant head coach and defensive line coach. So ex really excited about this staff, Jamie. And this isn't because we it's just new or fresh. There's just a lot of pieces where I feel we're going to, evolve and growing is a big theme uh for this past year right we can't settle on what we did i'm proud of what we did in the new wazoo but now in this 23 team as we develop coup versus everybody you know how are we going to grow and take steps and uh, that's going to be the focal point as we head into this off season i think when we spoke to you um right around signing day you had uh you had devin richardson in the boat as the texas linebacker transfer since then um, added a few more, Christian Kanu, Amon McCullough, Kyle Williams, Josh Kelly, Isaiah Hamilton, and Isaiah Paul. Can you just kind of talk about each one of those guys uh, briefly and kind of what you see, not only kind of what they're going to bring to the program, but maybe what you see kind of as an early role for them as, as you get into spring ball here in a few weeks? Well, I think Christy, you know, starting at the offensive line, you know, is still a priority. We need to upgrade an offensive line. And it isn't just bringing in Christy to come and compete for an interior offensive line spot. We talked about Essa Pole bringing him in at one of those tackle spots. It's going to be the growth of Kendall Williams and Jacobus Seth and the Roten twins. And, you know, all those linemen, Zach Miller, like this, that continued growth of that position is paramount to our offensive success. And we want to build this thing, you know, at the line of scrimmage. So Christy being added to that, gives us a big, broad base, uh, Rod Talavea being back. You know, that's like getting an extra transfer in my mind. You know, so it's going to be, again, one of our most competitive groups in the spring. And I'm excited about, you know, obviously Connor Gomness and him captaining that ship and all the extra time that these guys have put in even early through winter camp, I think has been impressive. Uh, the second biggest need, I believe, on our, our football team was, you know, bringing in some experienced wide receivers. You know, so Kyle, Josh, Isaiah, all different players, all different kind of personalities and skill sets. We needed to get faster. We needed to get more explosive. You know, combine him with DT and Carlos being an early enrollee. I feel comfortable about five new wide receiver uh, that are going to fit into, you know, Coach Arbuckle's offense and how we're going to use them and what those roles will still be determined. You know, we're just two weeks in to kind of seeing them move around a little bit through strength and conditioning, uh, but excited about the playmaking opportunities and stretching the field deep. Okay. One of the biggest reasons, you know, that I missed on also that hiring coach Arbuckle, you know, Western Kentucky led the country in 20 plus yard passes. We need to be explosive down the field. We have the quarterback to do it. We need to sure up the offensive line and the protection to allow him to do it. And we need to be exact in our reads and have guys that can stretch the field. Combine that with Leighton Smithson's growth. I'm really excited about what that wide receiver, you know, crew can be and Lincoln Victor's leadership and how Coach Edwards is going to elevate that room. You know, so that'll be a great uh, kind of storyline coming out of our spring. Probably third and, and not in that order, but, you know, securing the linebacker position. You know, David Richardson and his experience and already what I feel is tremendous leadership within our team. Uh, Ahmad coming in and, and obviously his athleticism even now is off the charts. We did 10 yard splits uh, the other day and he was one five, nine. I mean, you're talking about that's like high level uh, safety stuff, you know, so his ability to be rangy a little bit more in that day on mold. Um, then Isaiah Paul, you know, at 6'2", 240 pounds, you know, feel he can be a tough physical presence, you know, combining that with Hudson Cedarland's growth at Mike and Kyle Thornton's steadiness at the linebacker position, feel like we have a really good base um, to really grow on. And I don't think I'm forgetting anybody, am I? Okay, next question, Julian Minnison. Go ahead, Julian. Hey, Jake, thanks for taking the time. Congrats on the extension. Um, just, just wanted to get your perspective. You spoke about the continuity and, and stability per, uh, perspective of when it came to hiring your assistants, but how much of Jeff and Nick having ties to the area and just having a pulse on the area and the talent that's out here and what fans expect, how much did that go into um, ultimately having them in those roles? Well, I think it was huge. You know, um, it's funny because I spent last week up in Spokane just visiting a bunch of high schools and every one of them talked about Jeff Schmetting, right? Um, not just being from there, but the relationships that he has built 
uh, within our region and even on the west side of the state, uh, recruiting for a long time. And, you know, obviously Nick being from Tacoma and he's recruited L.A., we're going to put him uh, as our major recruiter in L.A., but to understand, we're going to double down on the Pacific Northwestern recruiting. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on uh, in the recruiting cycle that have been well documented. People that in our region, Washington, Idaho, Oregon, you know, we're going to comb, you know, through every player, turn up every rock, and we're going to find the best players that fit Washington State. And we're going to develop those guys into, you know, the Abe Lucases of the world who's upstairs working out right now. So, just excited about their regional ties and what that means because not just talking to them, right, but talking to their families, you know, we're coming home. And I think that is something that people really value. Uh, we never compromise the coaching aspect up for it. It's just a really big bonus that both of them carry. And I think they can bring something to our program, you know, just through the relationships that they have built over time and excited about utilizing those. And, and when it comes to Ben, um, obviously a young guy who's, who's climbing rather quickly through this business, what was something during the process that stuck out to you as to uh, kind of reinforce to you why he's been able to do that at such a, it's at the rate he's going. I love surrounding myself with smart people. You know, one of the biggest things that stuck out is, you know, he's 27, he's got two degrees a couple of years ago, you know, not that his story mirrors mine, but he was a high school coach, you know, but he's been dedicated to the process, to the players, to the schematics. And there's a confidence and an aura that Coach Arbuckle has around him, you know, and I'm excited about coming in in a short time and making a big time impression on our players, just being easy to talk to, being relatable, understanding the recruiting of it. There was just a lot of things that I think his mentality and mindset really fit here. And remember, he's walking into a unique situation, a old coordinator that, you know, a lot of the pieces are already here. So who can relate that? Who can create a vision and who can work in partnership with a lot of the guys? And, you know, him and Clay are both small town West Texas guys. I mean, they've hit it off in a snap. So it's just his vision of what he believes he can do with our pieces, what he can do with Cam and how you know, I'm always looking for a partner on that side of the ball to continue to progress and grow. And I think he loves a challenge, you know, and I think there are not that, you know, there's a challenge with our offense, but he wants to make it better. And I think just his passion, you know, really was shining through during this whole time and excited to bring him here on staff here to Pullman. Next question, Colton Clark. Go ahead, Colton. Good afternoon, Jake. Congrats on the extension there. I appreciate it, Colton. So, you know, from what I understand, the Arbuckle system is is sort of a modified air raid. Uh, could you kind of take us through, you know, what makes it different and, you know, just some of the the schematic stuff of the system and what impressed you about it? Well, I think, once again, air raid is the most misused term in all of college football. And like I said, I uh, obviously appreciate Coach Leach and his – foundation of what he built i think all these modern day air raid guys are using air raid pass concepts um with our still modern run game uh coach arbuckle is more of a power counter gap scheme a little bit more vertical rpo game off it we'll still have screens and quicks like built in and cam will still have the ability to really control our offense but what i loved over time it's just his ability to get into max protection, be willing to use seven guys, take the ball down the field, and just kind of how sync he was in play calling as far as how he's utilizing our offense, taking what the defense gives him, you know, whether that's 50 rushes or 60 passes. I, I thought his balance, you know, per game, you know, was, was very good. And we still want to be tough. We still want to be aggressive. We still want to run the football. You know, and I think he's going to add wrinkles within that game to be very successful and then have the ability to take max protection and take the ball down the field. And I think that's the next evolution of where we need to go in our offense, regardless of the change or not. That was going to be a big time emphasis that I had in what we did. Uh, it was just an opportunity to go out and some, find somebody that, um, you know, had that within the core of what they do. So I think those are the things. And uh, I'm excited for Kook fans everywhere to to just see what we can do and how we're going to utilize our pieces to maximize our players' potential. You know, I've already talked to Coach Arbuckle. This isn't just rinse and repeat of what you did. Like, well, how can we utilize our players, our speed, our skill sets to get them the ball in space and win? You know, so I think we share the vision of offensive football and how we're working towards putting those things together. 
with with the new wide receivers and linebackers, I know you said it, it's early, still figuring out roles and whatnot. Yeah. But was it any of those guys that you know when you got your first look at them and in, in whatever drills that you were just like this guy, is a, you know, could be a standout for us. Was there anyone that pops in your head? Yeah, I'm not gonna put that pressure just on anybody yet. I'm really excited with. To be honest with you, and, and going back all the way to, um, you know, our personnel department and Rob Schlager and, you know, there's a lot of challenges when you're trying to, you know, you don't plan on recruiting a position and then always have to do that and evaluate that. And there's a lot of time and effort that has been put into our program and doing those things. So getting those six to seven guys that we mentioned here, there's a lot of been a lot of hard work over the last six weeks behind the scenes and really proud of our staff for doing those things. Um, but I think Kyle Williams his ability just through his tape and what we've seen. I, I'm really excited about what he can do and outside, inside role. Josh Kelly, you know, more taking the top off the outside. And like I said, Ahmad has been really impressive with his athleticism and how we're going to utilize that. Um, but there's a growth mindset in all of these guys. And what I see is a hunger. Okay. They're here. They're hungry. There's been a lot of buy-in. I've seen some of those guys more than I've seen anybody else upstairs learning, getting their coaches wanting to get on the same page. So there's just the want to of those guys, uh, Colton, has really stood up to me so far. With Nkanu, I know, I know he played multiple spots at Southern Utah. Is it looking like he'll maybe be a guard and maybe a replacement for Grant Stevens? Yeah, he'll be an inside player. There's, there's no question uh, Christy will be an inside guy, and uh, we'll find the best combination as we go through that. You know, where's Essa's best position? What's the next evolution of Christian Hillborn through, in through two weeks? I would point out Christian has been maybe one of our most improved guys of just how he's changed his attitude and his mentality about how he's gone about his work. Um, so is that at tackle? Is that at guard? Uh, where does where does Rod fit in? Uh, I just I'm just excited about all these pieces. And again, I think competition brings out the best in everybody, you know, so to have another competitive room, have more depth, have a bunch of young guys that are hungry and Zach Miller and the Rotans and like I said, Kendall Williams, I just think it's going to elevate everybody. But Christy will be in that interior mix. Next question, Andrew Quinn. Go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Can you hear me? Have you now? We got you now. Okay. I uh, just wanted to ask you, your first two years as a head coach, you've had to bring in new coordinators in both years. How difficult of a challenge is that, especially when you're trying to build on the foundation that you've already put in place uh, prior to that and also trying to incorporate new concepts? Just how difficult is that just right off the bat, twice in a row, having to do something like that? Well, I think there's definitely challenges involved, right? It's an, is it an obstacle or is it an opportunity? Okay. And the way I took in our mindset is it's an opportunity to continue to grow. And it's one of those things too, where I just read an article the other day. I think there's 50 FBS offensive coordinators that have transitioned out, you know, so that's a third of the FBS. So, um, and I meant what I said, like it, my biggest focus on offense wasn't to hit a restart button. Okay, it was bringing in somebody that understood the core of what we do, can elevate what we do, and let's take a big step forward. You know, because there's uh, obviously, you know, step forwards that we need to make in every realm of our football team to get better. And like I said, the breadth of experience with Coach Smedding, um, because I think, you know, Brian and I were so similar. I think bringing in someone that has a good base of other things, too, I think is going to enhance our program. So, you know, you're either growing or you're dying. Uh, so at the end of the day, there's some challenges to it. But I looked at it as an opportunity to bring in the right men uh, to mentor our players first, but to also expand on the schematics of what we do. And and we're going to take another step forward. And every phase of our program needs to grow. And that's where we're looking at. And that's the focus of our program right now. And what specifically was it about Coach Smetting coming from Auburn and having a defense put together that was similar to the one that you've put together that really you decided that he was the right guy to bring in for this position? Well, I've, first, first and foremost, it takes the right personality. It takes the right mentality. It takes, takes the right ego to say, Hey, let's do what's best for the team. Let's do what's best for what our guys know. 
and yet have a basis of knowledge and confidence to come in and run that. And Jeff is 100% the right guy to do it. Even working through this week of really, you know, installing our defense and talking through a lot of different ideas and what's the vision of where we want to go and how we want to teach those things. Um, it's been very collaborative. You know, it's been, how do you see it? This is how we see it. Let's let's find the best version. Uh, and I think it's been really productive. And I think our players will feel that come spring practice. And I think the results will be shown on the field. Uh, on defense, you know, we came here, I'm not sure the numbers, but 2020, we were in the 120th, you know, uh, scoring defense. Then we we're 54th. Then I believe we're in the 40s. Like, let's take another step forward. Where does this group want to go? We haven't reached our maximum potential. So I think Jeff's fully on board. He's fully in partnership with wanting to do that and just excited about the personality and the vision of how we can do this together. And, and like I said, this isn't my defense. You know, this isn't Jeff's defense. This is our defense. This is Washington State defense. And we're going to build it together and excited about uh, him being the guy calling the shots. Thanks, Coach. Next question, Trevor John. Trevor, go ahead. How you doing, Coach? Good. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Uh, so I just had a question about uh, Arbuckle, Coach Arbuckle. Uh, you mentioned on it earlier, he was coaching high school football just three years ago. So how do you come across a guy like that and think he's like perfect for your offense? Well, there's a lot that goes into that. And some of it I've kind of spoken on a little bit, but um, I'm a small town college football coach. I have D3 written all over me, right? And I don't care where you come from, how you got there. It's about what you can bring to the table now. And I think Coach Arbuckle, through the process, articulated a vision, a competency, a details, an energy, a want to, a want to be here and a want to grow here and a want to establish something great here together. So um, that to me is the right fit. And, you know, just like I, I told Eric in the past, I have coaches back 100%. Um, we're going to grow this thing together. So uh, excited about having a partner in this. And and like I said, I don't I don't care where you come from and what you're doing. It's about what you can do now and and where we can you know be together. You know, I'm excited. I, I I've said this many times. Those ten full time assistant coaches that we talked about, that's my position group. You know, I provide them with feedback. I mentor and grow them as well. So uh, just excited about the men and the character in that room and and how we can grow together. And Coach Arbuckle at uh, Western Kentucky also led the nation in explosive plays. Um, I think it was 98, which is 10 more than anybody else in the nation. Was that a focus in hiring him? Um, and are you excited about that, obviously, coming up this up next coming season? Yeah, like I said, I thought it was a big focus. You have to be able to take the ball down the field. And sometimes those 20-plus passes are guys catching the ball at five yards and creating explosive plays, right? That's what I saw when I watched them, too. Our, our playmakers have to make plays, and we have to put them, you know, in the best position to win in space. And I, I thought, you know, that's what his goal is. That's what his mentality is. We'll shape it around our players, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, college football needs to be challenging formationally. It needs to be challenging tempo-wise. It needs to be challenging in the RPO game. And, you know, I think that's what his focus is, and that's kind of what our offense will look like going forward. That's all from me, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, Jamie. Go ahead. You know me well enough to know I'm never done, Coach. Jamie, did you get, a, did you get an extension too? You're going to be back all season or what? That's what they tell me. Yep, I'll be around go. another year. You're not done with me quite yet. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Excited to have you. Um, you have a, a rough date for spring ball as of right now? Uh, yes. I know our spring game will be April 22nd. Um, the start will be right after our spring break. So uh, we'll be posting a lot of stuff via social media here really soon. Um, but it'll be that first Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for five weeks right after our spring break. Uh, the dates alluding to me right now when we'll start in March, but uh, it'll be in that March 20th area and our spring game will be April 22nd and excited about uh, getting back out on the field. Dare I even ask what time spring practice will be starting? Uh, you already know. You already uh, know. That'll be 7 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday and about uh, 10 a.m. on Saturdays. We'll let you sleep in, Jamie. I was worried you were going to say that. <laughs> um, in, in terms of just kind of uh, closing up the 2023 recruiting class, how many more guys do you kind of envision taking and at what positions are you going to try and focus on? Yeah, not many right now. Um, so defensive tackle will be one. We, we want a bunch of young developmental bodies. 
And then we'll kind of save maybe um, one for a, a walk on in our program that uh, exceeds throughout the spring or a need, you know, once offense defensively, they see our guys and what we need. Uh, there might be another one and, you know, whether through the JC or the late portal market to add uh, after spring ball. So we're kind of strategically kind of waiting in, in that area and, you know, but we'll never pass on a good young player that we can develop. And we feel very confident that that's going to be the core of our program. So that's exactly where we are right now and don't expect a lot in February. And, uh, you know, we're almost maxed out and excited about the fact that we have all these players here to work with right now. And I thought that was the big part of that early portal into even how we, um, you know, off of that first signing day brought in a lot of experienced junior college players as well. And just last thing for you, um, are the, of the guys that have kind of enrolled early, is it just all the JUCO guys, all the transfers, and then Carlos and Ansel, is that right? Correct. Yep, they're all here on campus right now. Uh, Warren Smith. Oh, and Warren Smith? Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Next up, Alex Presenti. Go ahead, Alex. Alex, go ahead. You got me now? You got me now? Yeah. We do. We do. Okay. Uh, Coach, I know you talked a lot about in the past about family really loving Pullman and, and just living down there. Um, have you been able to share the news with the, uh, the family? Oh yeah. We've, we, we've talked about this kind of as this kind of extension was being uh, talked about here just recently, just how, how proud we are to be here and how this is home to us and not just me and Candace, but, you know, Riley, Jet and Jace and, just being, you know, ingrained in the fabric of Washington State. You know, my boys were at the baseball camp uh, the other night and, and Riley, and it just, it's it's who we are. It's what we love. We, we love Pullman. We love Washington State. We, we love what um, lifestyle we have here and just excited about, I meant it, pouring all of ourselves into that. And that just isn't me. And I appreciate you asking the question, Alex. Um, it isn't just me. It's, it's our family. It's, it's Candace being the rock of, our family and everything that I'm allowed to do. Um, so we're all bought in and we poured everything we possibly can in here. And we look forward to doing that for a long time. For you, for you. Uh, in uh, terms of just, you talked about the growth of these players um, and just everyone buying in and the personnel, how much of the playbook is going to look different for them and how much do they have to relearn? You know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, especially some of the transfer guys, sometimes it's learning a new language. You know, I'm a big believer. If something is new, give it a new term. You know, don't give it an old term with a new meaning. You know, so some of it will just be navigating through that. I think on offense, it'll be a lot of very similar. And then like I talked about on defense, it'll be 80-20. But new is good. Growing is good. Um, evolving is really good. New ideas is really good. You know, so I know the biggest thing is, my challenge to the staff is fight to get on the same page, right? Fight to make sure you're asking the right questions. So when you go into your position group and you're on that field, right, we're giving our guys the exact specific information that they need to be their best, you know? So that's going to take extra time to make sure we're on the same page. I've asked for the players to have a little grace time before we really get in front of them. Because when we bring information to them, I want it to be right. I want them to be confident. I want them to articulate it the exact way that we want to coach and teach it. You know, so these next couple of months heading into spring ball and uh, what I call winter camp, you know, strength and conditioning and upholding that standard um, is going really well. And our coaches behind the scenes, you know, are spending a lot of hours getting on the same page. So there'll be a lot of same as, but there'll be a lot of new too and excited about that new and how do we utilize those things to continue to grow. All right, next question from Sam Taylor. Sam, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on your extension. On your extension. Thank you, Sam. Um, with no, so many new faces in the building, how have you helped your new coaches and your new players adapt to life in Pullman? I think the biggest thing is connecting. You know, I, I talk about all the time is connection is our edge. You know, and I call it colliding, right? I don't want any strangers in the building, you know? So it's introducing them as soon as they got here. We've already had a couple of team events. We've had a dodgeball tournament. We've had a, you know, NFL watch party. We've had a bunch of different things to create connections. And we'll continue to do that throughout the course of these eight weeks before we hit spring ball. 
Um, we have a team draft here in a couple of weeks. We have different competitions that we do with those 10 teams, you know, so reshaping a team each and every year, regardless of the pieces, regardless of the coaches is vital. You know, once you get after that bowl game and, and our players and our staff get back on campus, there's a new identity that has to be, you know, transformed each and every year. This isn't just hit the repeat same as, you know, obviously it's different players, different coaches, and those connections need to be real. Uh, but I also say that what makes Washington State football special is that we have each other. We go through the things together. Um, so part of trusting each other, right? We talk about truth, relationships, understanding, sharing, and time. You need to share your story. And you need to share who you are. The faster that we can understand each other, the faster we can trust one another. And trusting that process, trusting each other, and trusting your coaches is things that we talk about a lot. So we're working on developing those things. And I know it's a long-winded answer, but you know, connection uh, to your point is very important. And it's not something that, you know, all the time just happens by itself. We, we do a lot of different things to create those things.